The path is very difficult to follow. It's a pothole dirt road. Nina has a hard time walking in high heels. These rich people are so mean. At least they should build a concrete road. Nina whispers in the woods. Suddenly a strong arm grabs her from behind. Nina thinks it is Lucian. Don't you want me to leave? She just finishes with a big hand covering her mouth. This man is not Lucian. Lucian has a hint of cologne. The man behind her smells of sweat. Who is he? Nina screams in horror. Her mouth is so tightly covered that she can't make a sound. She can only sob. Don't shout. If you shout, I'll scratch your face. There is something cold around her neck, and Nina knows it is a sharp dagger. Nina shuts up. She thinks of her self-defense class at university. Don't provoke the kidnapper when you meet him. Be resourceful. This is a forest. It's no use shouting because he seems to have an accomplice. The kidnapper seemed to be satisfied with Nina's cooperation. He takes the dagger back but immediately ties Nina's wrist with a thick hemp rope and tapes it to her mouth. Nina is thinking fast. She's just a mistress with no money and no potential. Why did they kidnap her? Did they want to threaten Lucian? Nina shakes her head. That's impossible. She doesn't matter in Lucian's mind. Lucian can't be in charge of it. Nina is crammed into a black RV. There are two roads by this forest. One is a path leading to the outside street. The other road is wider, leading to the mountain behind the villa. Nina is left in the trunk. She can't see outside at all. She listens carefully, hoping to hear cars and people in the street. But she can't hear anything but the engine. Nina is a little desperate. They seem to be taking her to the mountain. The mountain is very remote. They don't just want to kidnap her. She bursts into tears. Is her baby going to leave the world with her before she is born? Nina feels a sharp heartache. Andrew gallops down the path, but he is far away from Nina. He watches Nina take a turn and disappear behind the trees. Behind the trees there is a path leading to the street outside. Nina may want to take a taxi. Andrew is running faster. The wind is blowing in his ear. He suddenly has a bad feeling. Although the security is good here, she is a girl. It's not safe for her to walk alone at night. Andrew walks through the woods and sees the street outside. He wants to call Nina's name, but he stops. The street is empty. She's not here. Nina. Nina. Andrew's forehead begins to sweat. Where's Nina? Why can't I see her? His shouts echoes in the air. Andrew looks around desperately, hoping it's just a joke Nina makes on him. She's hiding behind a tree, and after a while she's going to burst out laughing, Andrew. I'm here. It's like three years ago. But Andrew's wish fails. His voice is almost hoarse, but Nina hasn't appeared yet. Suddenly he sees something. There is a blue iris on the way to the mountain. Andrew squats down to pick up the flower. There are footprints of high heels and several men's shoes on the ground. Nina must have had an accident. Andrew turns around and runs frantically towards the garage. The scarred kidnapper takes the tape off Nina's mouth. He laughs ferociously. Little girl, say a last word. Otherwise you will never have a chance to speak again. Nina holds back her fear and makes her voice sound calmer. Who made you do it? The kidnapper gives a grim smile. It doesn't matter who told us. You should know you're going to die today. Another skinny kidnapper stares at Nina. He reaches for her chest and says to the scarred kidnapper, Brother, she is thin but she has a good figure. It's a pity to kill her, are we? Ha ha. Nina just feels goosebumps all over her body. If she is insulted by such two people, she really wants to die. The scarred kidnapper shakes his head. We were told to do it perfectly. We can't leave any trace. The thin kidnapper shakes his head a little regretfully. It's a waste for such a young girl to die like this. The more Nina listens, the more frightened she becomes. She can't die. 
She's going to put off time. Maybe there's a chance. Brothers, have you seen the jewels on me? This set of jewelry is priceless. The ring in my hand alone is worth tens of millions of dollars. I'll give them all to you. The scarred kidnapper laughs. They'll be ours when you die. Nina is desperate. It seems that these kidnappers are determined not to let him go. Who wants to kill her so badly? Baby, mom is sorry for you. Mom doesn't protect you. If there is afterlife, I hope you can be my baby. I will protect you well and not let anyone hurt you. Nina mumbles to her baby in her heart. A car is coming this way. The thin kidnapper looks around and says to the scarred kidnapper, Brother, let's do it. There seems to be a car coming. The scarred kidnapper shakes his head. No one will see us in the middle of the night. Let her finish her last words, or I'm afraid she will become a ghost and pester us. Nina also listens carefully to the car. She comes up with a way. She pretends to be extremely afraid and says to the scarred kidnapper pitifully, Brother, it seems that I must die today. I just hope you can bury my body in the earth after I die. The scarred kidnapper laughs wildly. You are not qualified to ask us to do it. Nina tries to smile. I have a lot of money in the bank safe. Come here. I'll tell you the code. This money will be my funeral expenses. The thin kidnapper looks at the scarred kidnapper jealously. The scarred kidnapper is excited and walks quickly to Nina. He glances at the skinny kidnapper and urges Nina, say it. Nina whispers, brother, I think you are kind-hearted, so I just want to tell you. Come here. The scarred kidnapper happily puts his ear near Nina's mouth. Nina's eyes glows with anger. Baby, mom avenge you. She opens her mouth and bites the scarred kidnapper's ear with all her strength. Ah, the scarred kidnapper shouts. Blood runs down his neck. Nina doesn't let go, so the scarred kidnapper doesn't dare to move. He is afraid that his ears will be bitten off. Hurry up. Kill her. The scarred kidnapper orders the skinny one. The thin kidnapper raises his dagger and runs to Nina. Nina closes her eyes. With a shot the thin kidnapper falls heavily to the ground. Before the scarred kidnapper can respond, another shot goes off. His body falls forward to the ground. Nina opens her eyes. With tears in her eyes, she looks incredibly at the man running in a hurry. It's her Andrew. Nina finally relaxes. She faints. Andrew runs over and holds her tightly in his arms. When she opens her eyes again, Nina finds herself in a strange room. It's a cool and pleasant room with a light fragrance. There is a work table 10 meters in front of the bed. Andrew is sitting with his back to her, working on the computer. Nina wants to talk to him. She opens her mouth but can only make a hoarse voice. Andrew hears her faint voice. He gets up and walks up to Nina. He is wearing a clean shirt with two buttons untied and a light brown coat. He's gentle and has surprise in his brown eyes. He smiles and says, Nina, you're awake. Nina bursts into tears. As Andrew stretches out his arms, she falls into Andrew's arms. Grievance, fear and guilt for her baby make her cry. She wants to forget about the contract and Lucian. She needs a hug at the moment. She wants to shed tears and vent her fears. Andrew's arms are warm and just as she thinks. Nina leans her face on Andrew's shoulder and cries. Andrew pats her on the back. Well, don't be afraid. Andrew is by your side. Being coaxes by Andrew, Nina's fear finally disappears. Her cry dwindles to a sob. Andrew, am I in a mess now? Nina puts her head on Andrew's shoulder. She regrets her crying just now. No, my Nina is always the most beautiful. Andrew says in her ear. It is gentle, low and can comfort her. A priceless white sports car speeds along the quiet road. Lucian puts one hand on the steering wheel and the other next to the open window. The howling wind blows his short black and handsome hair. 
He has three-dimensional facial features and a perfect face. His sexy mouth is closed tightly. Nina went home by herself. He wanted to sleep with the women who came to him, but he felt something was wrong after changing two women. He feels a little uncomfortable as if something was stuck in his heart so that he can't breathe properly. He wants to go home. It's better to have a fight with Nina to make him happy than to sleep with these women. It doesn't matter that Nina doesn't love him. He will try to make her love him. One day he will get Nina completely. He wants her love more than her body. Lucian smiles as he glances aside at the beautifully packed cardboard box. Nina said two days ago that she was going to buy some small clothes for her baby, but she had no time to buy them. He just went to the best baby store in City C and bought some of the most beautiful baby clothes. Thinking of Nina's happy expression when she sees the clothes, Lucian's smile deepens. The car phone rings. Lucian, Miss Sulia has called you several times. She wanted me to tell you that she misses you. She used to be ignorant, but now she knows she was wrong. She begs you to give her a chance. Lucian's assistant informs him clearly. After a pause, she says, Miss Sulia also said that she has just had a plastic surgery. She said you will like her. Lucian smiles sarcastically. At the moment, he just wants to hurry back to have porridge. He admits that he is addicted to Nina. Get her out of here. Lucian says indifferently. He hangs up and dials another number. Paige, is Miss Morrison asleep? Miss Morrison is not at home. Didn't she go to the party with you? Lucian's heart seems to be pounded. His hands are shaking. He breaks hard and the luxury sports car crashes into the post box on the side of the road and stops by the wall. He hangs up and calls Nina. Lucian frowns and gnaws his teeth. Take my call, Nina. Sorry, the subscriber you dialed is turned off. The mechanical female voice reminds Lucian that Nina really disappears this time. Lucian hits the steering wheel. Nina, where the hell are you? Is your cell phone dead or did you turn it off on purpose? Lucian kicks the door open and calls Ryan as he walks out of the car. Nina is missing. Let all our people in City C find her now. If you can't find her, you don't have to live. In the cool and pleasant room, Nina finally calms down after crying. Nina is embarrassed to see Andrew's jacket crumpled by her tears and snot. Andrew, I want to go back. Please take me out. No, Andrew looks directly at Nina. His voice is gentle and his tone is firm. Nina has a heartache. She looks up at Andrew. Andrew, I have to go back. Nina, do you love Lucian? Do you love him? Andrew is also heartbroken. He stares at Nina and his tone is stubborn and serious. Her heart pounds. Andrew, how can I answer you? If I say I don't love him, can you give up Abby? If I say I don't love him, can I leave Lucian to be with you? That's impossible. We've missed each other. Nina is not the innocent little girl three years ago. She's just a disgraceful mistress now. Nina bites her lip and controls herself. Yes, I love him. Her tone is flat, but there is a pain in her wet eyes that cannot be concealed. Andrew opens his eyes wide and holds out his hand to touch Nina's eyes. He whispers softly, Nina, you're lying. If you really love him, your eyes won't be so sad. Nina feels very sad. Why can he always see through the most secret corner of her heart? She's already said she loves Lucian. Why does he still refuse to let her go? Why is he so stubborn? Don't be nice to her. Nina pushes Andrew away and away from him. She pleads, Andrew, let me go. I really can't stay here. Andrew begs more sincerely than she does. Nina, can you give me a day? I just want you to stay with me for one day. Nina can't refuse Andrew. She cannot refuse the deep pain and entreaty in his gentle eyes. She looks down with a sad smile. I promise you, I promise you, 
because this is our last day. I promise you, because I will never see you again. I promise you, because from now on, I will erase you from my memory. Andrew, I promise you. She has no time to think about how crazy Lucian will be if he can't find her. She just wants to hold on to the warmth of her fingertips. Andrew's fingers are white, slender, clean and warm. When Nina finally agrees to stay here, Andrew's gentle eyes are filled with happiness. Are you hungry? He touches her hair. Shall I make you porridge? Nina desperately controls her emotions. She shakes her head and says coldly, I'm not hungry. Andrew's hands tremble at Nina's faint tone. He asks with some embarrassment, do you hate me if I force you to stay here? Nina bites her lip and smiles and shakes her head at Andrew. She begins to cry again. How could she hate him? She has been thinking of him. How could she hate him? She is willing to do anything for him. She is just afraid that he hates her. She is not as good as he thinks. She is not the little princess who had excellent character and learning three years ago. Her life has long been ruined. Nina. Andrew suddenly sighs in a low voice. He bends down and holds her gently on the shoulder. His embrace is not possessive. Nina's whole body is tense and motionless. She smells the smell of mint on him. Nina desperately controls the urge to lean her face in his arms. She blinks and snuffles. Andrew, I'm suddenly a little hungry. Okay, I'll cook for you. What do you want to eat? I remember you used to like stewed beef brisket with tomato. Shall I cook it for you? Andrew's voice is warm like the sun. There is a happy smile on his elegant face. Okay. Nina turns around and lowers her head, letting tears fall directly from her eyes to the ground. This is her last day with Andrew. She can't cry. She wants to be as happy as she was three years ago. Nina watches Andrew in his apron carefully cut vegetables in the kitchen. Her eyes begin to wet again. He's her Andrew. He is standing so close to her now. She can hold him as soon as she reaches out. But she can't do it. She has long been disqualified from doing so. Nina turns around quietly, trying to make her voice sound calm. Andrew, may I have a look at the house? Of course. If you are tired, you can have a rest. The meal will be ready in a minute. Andrew's hair is dyed light flax, which sets off his eyes. The sun shines on his face from the window. He is as handsome as a prince in a fairy tale. Nina dares not look at him again. She goes to the second floor. The house is big and its basic color is dreamy pink. Nina is a little curious about how Andrew could have decorated his house in such a dreamy style. People will think that it's an 18-year-old girl who lives here. Nina walks upstairs, holding the delicate carved iron railing. She stands on the second floor of the stairs. She is so shocked that her eyes widen and she can't speak. A young girl is painted on the wall in front of her. She is in a white dress and her long black hair is loose. She laughs happily in the sun. She has a white face, a delicate nose and a ruddy mouth. Her clear eyes are looking at Nina at the moment. Two pairs of identical eyes are looking at each other. One is on the wall and one is on the stairs. They are three years apart, but they all belong to Nina. Andrew paints Nina who is 18 on the whole wall. Every line is so delicate and every color is so exquisite. The person who drew this picture must be full of love and great passion. Because Nina is already moved to tears. Nina can no longer control her emotions. She sits in the corner of the stairs and cries quietly. She doesn't make a sound, but there are waves in her heart. Andrew, if it wasn't for my kidnapping, I will never see this painting in my life. If I was determined to leave, I will never know that you love me so deeply. Nina, the meal is ready. Andrew shouts happily. It has always been his dream to spend a day alone with Nina. This dream has come true today. Nina hurriedly dries her tears and goes to the dining room.
Andrew's smile disappears when he sees Nina. What's the matter? Did you cry? Nina's eyes are red. He can see that she has just cried. Andrew, is that your painting? Nina takes a breath and looks at Andrew's handsome face. Yes. Do you like it? Andrew puts down his chopsticks and goes to Nina. He holds her shoulder and looks down into her eyes and asks carefully. Nina looks at Andrew and smiles. I love it. Nina, I couldn't find you anywhere then. I was afraid I would never see you again. I was afraid I would forget what you looked like. So I drew you. I can see your smile every time I get home as if you are always with me. Has Abby ever been to this house? Nina suddenly wants to ask him, but she doesn't. Today is the only day and the last day for her and Andrew. They must have a good time. A faint smile on Nina's face attracts Andrew. Nina is less naive and more charming. But no matter how she changes, she is still so beautiful. Andrew is satisfied to see her. Come on, have a meal. Try these dishes. Andrew leads Nina to the dinner table and carefully pulls a chair for her. He made four dishes and one soup. The color of stewed beef brisket with tomato is very beautiful. The soup is full-bodied, which makes people want to taste it. The perch in steamed perch is fresh and fat, and the sauce sends out light fragrance. The chicken in three-cup chicken is glossy. There are some fresh peppermint beside it. There are also scalded broccoli and creamy mushroom cream soup. These dishes are Nina's favorite. Andrew, I remember you didn't cook before. Nina is astonished. He was born in a wealthy family and never has to cook. But now he can cook such complicated dishes. Andrew smiles sheepishly. Nina, you said your boyfriend must be able to cook. Nina is so moved that her voice trembles. So you learn how to cook? Yes. I cut my hand when I started to learn how to cut vegetables. Andrew smiles at Nina. He seems to be embarrassed by his clumsiness. Nina looks at Andrew's left index finger. Sure enough, there is a faint scar there. She can hardly see it without looking carefully. Andrew. Nina wants to cry again. Andrew reaches out and pats Nina on the head. It's just a minor injury and it's healed long ago. Let's eat. The simple and elegant light color tablewares set off the table full of delicious food. Andrew scoops Nina some cream mushroom soup. He measures the temperature outside the porcelain bowl with his index finger. He smiles and hands the soup to Nina. Nina, have some soup first. Nina takes a sip of soup and widens her eyes in surprise. Although the soup looks delicious, Nina didn't expect it to be so delicious. This soup is very refreshing. The freshness of the mushroom and the sweetness of the cream combine well. The warm soup goes down her esophagus into her stomach and makes her very comfortable. It's delicious. Andrew, you're great. I'm glad you like it. Andrew smiles at Nina. He reaches out his index finger to help Nina wipe the soup off the corner of her mouth. Nina looks down and suddenly feels a little uncomfortable. She suddenly thinks of Lucian. Lucian used to wipe the soup off the corner of her mouth. But Lucian's action was domineering and he would say sarcastically, Nina, you look terrible when you eat. Did you starve to death in your last life? Lucian's sarcasm makes Nina not think the act of wiping the corner of her mouth is gentle. But Andrew's action is so natural and gentle. Nina realizes for the first time that this kind of action should be between lovers. She glances at Andrew's engagement ring on his ring finger. Her heart pounds. Nina bows her head to drink the soup. Andrew doesn't notice Nina's change. There is a dreamy smile on the corner of his lips. He looks at Nina's beautiful face and says slowly, Nina, this is my happiest day in three years. Andrew, me too. It's also the happiest day I've had in three years. But Nina can only say that in her heart. She's no longer qualified to say that to Andrew. Andrew senses Nina's silence and his eyes get sad. Nina, don't you like being with me? 
No, I just. Nina suddenly doesn't know what to say. A few barks of dogs come out of the door. Nina turns to look at Andrew in confusion. Andrew is suddenly excited. He claps his hands and says, Snowball, come on. A little white pug comes running. Nina can't help smiling at its lovely appearance. Snowball, she is Nina. Come on, say hello. Andrew picks up Snowball and raises one of its chubby front paws to greet Nina. It's Snowball. Andrew just called Snowball and she didn't respond. It is the puppy Abby was looking for in the hospital that day. Nina's eyes get sad. Abby is its mommy and Andrew is its daddy. It reminds Nina that Andrew is Abby's fiancé. Nina has always been an outsider. Nina, you said that your biggest dream was to have a white dog in your adult memorial. Andrew's gentle voice sounds a little depressed. So I secretly raised Snowball and prepared it for you on your 18-year-old adult memorial. You just disappeared before that day. I couldn't find you anywhere. Nina stares at Andrew in surprise. What? Snowball was bought by Andrew for her. She remembers that day in the hospital. Abby said Andrew liked Snowball very much. It turns out Andrew cares so much about Snowball because it's a gift he prepared for her. Nina's heart is like being pinched with a big hand. She is too sad to breathe. She bursts out crying. Nina's mood finally gets out of control. She cries, why are you so nice to me? You know we can't be together. You have Abby. You're her fiancé and you're getting married. Andrew looks at Nina who is crying. He stands up and walks to her side, drawing her tearful little face up. He says firmly, Nina, I can break up with Abby. I can do anything as long as you are happy. No, Nina shouts in a hoarse voice. She knows Andrew just started his career. He just arrived in City C. If Mayor Lewis can help him, his career will develop greatly. And she can't be with him. Lucian won't let her go. Nina, honey, what do you want me to do? Andrew's voice is a little helpless. I don't know. I don't know. Don't force me anymore. Nina's voice is hoarse. She never cried when she was bullied or despised while working. She didn't cry when she was forced to be Lucian's mistress and tortured by him. But in front of Andrew, she seems to have shed all the tears of her life. Well, I won't speak. Don't cry. I shouldn't have made you cry. Andrew comes over and gently hugs Nina's shaking shoulders. He loves dearly her. Snowball barks around them. Andrew picks up Snowball and puts it in front of Nina. Nina, if you cry anymore, Snowball will laugh at you. Nina opens her eyes to see Snowball looking at her with its downy head askew. It blinks curiously. It's cute and Nina laughs. Andrew is relieved to see Nina laugh. Nina takes Snowball from Andrew and holds it in her arms. She pokes her finger into its little face. Snowball, you dare to laugh at me. I pinch your face. With that, Nina stops. Lucian's favorite action is to poke someone else's face with his hand. He likes to poke Nina in the face and say something threatening or ironic. Nina suddenly finds out that her actions and tone are very similar to Lucian. She bites her lips with some chagrin. Why does she think of that great devil? She's with Andrew and lovely Snowball right now. Why does she think of that damned man? But Nina has to admit that Lucian is a problem she can't avoid. She's been gone for so long without any reason. Lucian must be looking for her everywhere. Thinking of it, Nina laughs at herself. Lucian is probably looking for her because his private property is lost. He is unhappy because she dares to challenge his authority and disappears and is kidnapped without his approval. What will Lucian do if he knows she is with Andrew? Nina suddenly shivers. Nina, there are some fruits you like in the fridge. You can have some first. After a while, I'll take you to visit the room upstairs. After dinner, Andrew cleans up the kitchen. There is no servant in such a big villa. Nina wants to wash the dishes, 
but Andrew stops her. Nina, let me do it. I don't want you to do the dishes. Andrew looks at Nina with amber eyes. He gently conveys endless love and makes Nina feel uneasy. Lucian's eyes are either as blazing as a fire or as cold as ice. But Andrew is different. His eyes are like the winter sun, warm but not too hot. Nina is shocked when she thinks about it. What's the matter? She even compares Andrew with that man. Lucian is just a man who has the power to play with women. How can he compare with the gentle Andrew? Nina frowns and drives Lucian's face away from her mind. Maybe Lucian's going to find her and get angry. She'll think about it tomorrow. Nina, what are you thinking? Andrew finishes washing the dishes. He comes to Nina and says with a smile. Well, nothing. Don't you want to show me the room upstairs? Let's go. Nina's eyes droop a little. Andrew reaches out to Nina. His fingers are white, long and powerful. It is a pair of gentle and trustworthy hands. Nina hesitates for a moment and puts her hand in Andrew's. Andrew smiles. His eyes are full of happiness and love. He gently leads Nina's hand upstairs. Nina, this is the room I prepared for you. Andrew opens a pink door and says to Nina. Pink is the color of dreams. Nina says in her heart. This is the color that little girls like. Andrew, you really treat me like a kid. She is a little curious and thinks it is funny. Nina walks into the room decorated in a girly style. The walls are inlaid with crystal frames to form a crystal clear duo bow lattice. They reflect the pink style of the house, which is very dreamy. Although the overall style is a little naive, it looks very elegant and charming. Nina doesn't care and goes to the window. She has lived in this house for nearly a day. She hasn't been out yet. She doesn't know what's outside. Nina, don't you come and look at these crystal lattices. Andrew's voice is full of expectation. Crystal lattices. Nina walks over and looks in Andrew's direction. She doesn't see what it is at first sight. But she is completely stunned when she sees it. These crystal lattice are all her portraits. There is a picture of her in every lattice. They have been painted since she was a little girl. Nina is stunned. Andrew, is this my portrait? Even though Nina knows it is her own, she still can't believe it. Andrew's smile is a little bitter. Yes. Nina, it's all about you. Three years ago, you suddenly disappeared. I couldn't find you anywhere. So, whenever I missed you, I would draw a picture of you. I was afraid that if I didn't draw it, I would slowly forget you. Nina stays where she is and cries. Her tears roll in her clear eyes. Andrew. She can't speak anymore. What kind of feeling is this? Andrew is sincere to her. At that time, I was worried that as time went on, I would gradually forget you. But now I know I think more. It's impossible for me to forget. You. Andrew. Her tears finally flow down her beautiful face. Andrew comes up to her and gently hugs her shoulder. It's getting dark. Happy days are always too short. But misfortune is always so long. I have to go. Nina raises her eyes and says to Andrew. Nina, don't go. I break up with Abby. Shall we be together? Andrew holds Nina. He doesn't want her to go. Nina bites her lip to hold back the okay that has reached her mouth. She's not qualified to promise Andrew. She is not qualified to be Andrew's girlfriend. Andrew doesn't know that there is a fetus in her stomach whose father is unknown. He doesn't know she is Lucian's mistress. If Andrew knows, will he despise her? Will he laugh at her and satirize her like Lucian? She can't let Andrew know the truth. She is willing to let his memory stay three years ago. She hopes that in his heart she will always be an innocent little girl. She is as proud as a princess with the simplest smile. No, Andrew, you don't want to break up with Lucian. Nina, I know you like me. I can feel it. Shall we be together? Andrew's voice is worried.
I love him very much. I can't break up with him. Nina bites her lip and says painfully. Andrew puts down his hands holding Nina's arm. Between him and Lucian, Nina finally chooses Lucian and gives him up. Andrew fails but he doesn't want to give up. The girl he has been longing for 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 many years is standing in front of him now. How can he give up easily? He really can't bear it. Nina, don't you always want to see the sea? Shall I show you the sea? Andrew resists the pain and tries to smile. See, Nina is confused. Andrew takes Nina's hand to the window and pushes it open. Wow. After a second, Nina lets out a scream. Out of the window is the sea. It turns out to be a villa with sea view. She hasn't seen the sea for a long time. Her father was very busy after his business failed. They had no time to come to the seaside. Indulge yourself again. Let this happy time extend a little bit. Maybe in the years to come, all she has are memories with Andrew. After watching the sea, she will leave. She will go back to her life and accept the fate she cannot change. The sea breeze is cool and comfortable. There are only Andrew and Nina on the clean beach. Andrew, it's strange that there's no one around. Isn't it the tourist season? This is the private beach I bought. Of course, there will be no one else. Nina spits out her tongue. She is used to poverty and has long forgotten the privileges of many rich people. Nina, did your boyfriend see the sea with you? No. Nina's voice pauses. Lucian is just her master. The waves beat gently under their feet. The seagulls are flying happily in the distance. Nina and Andrew walk on the beach side by side, listening to the sound of the waves. This moment is too happy to be true. Nina prays in her heart, hoping that time will pass slowly. Andrew suddenly says, Nina, guess what I'm thinking now? What? I'm praying to God that time will slow down. Andrew's voice has an indescribable sadness. Nina opens her eyes in surprise and looks at Andrew. The cell phone rings suddenly. Andrew doesn't seem to hear it. He doesn't answer the phone. Andrew, your phone rings. Nina is kind enough to remind him and worries about something important in his company. Andrew takes a look at Nina. He sighs and picks up the phone. Andrew, where are you? Why don't you answer my call? The secretary said you didn't go to work at all. Where have you been? The gentle female voice comes out of the phone. Abby, I'm by the sea. By the sea. Are you alone? No. Who are you with? Is it Nina? The voice on the other end of the phone becomes shrill. Yes. Abby, I want to tell you one thing. Andrew says firmly. No, I won't listen. I won't listen. Don't say anything. I don't want to hear it. Andrew is interrupted by Abby before he finishes speaking. Andrew takes a deep breath. He ignores Abby and says, Abby, let's break up. Nina opens her eyes again in surprise. She didn't expect Andrew to break up with Abby because of her. After all, Abby is the mayor's daughter. With her father's help, Andrew's career will go well. There is a long silence at the end of the phone. Then comes the woman's sob. Andrew, did I do something wrong? I'll change everything you say. Andrew has a look of pain on his face. No, Abby. You're great. I'm not good enough. I fell in love with someone else. You fell in love with someone else. You never forget her. Abby's voice sounds angry. Why don't you take me to that villa by the sea? What's in it? Andrew is silent. Abby cries louder. She almost screams. Andrew, have you ever loved me? Abby, I'm sorry. Let's break up. You deserve a better man. Andrew's amber eyes are full of pain, and his body is shaking. Breaking up with Abby is not easy for him either. Andrew, why do you do this to me? I already have your children. Abby asks angrily. I already have your children. Andrew and Nina are stunned at the same time. The waves are still lapping gently on the beach. It never changes and doesn't care about human feelings. 
Andrew, I'm going back. Nina says faintly. She lowers her eyes. Her long lashes cast a thick shadow over her fair cheek. Andrew can't see her face. They are silent. I have to go. Nina raises her eyes and says to Andrew. She tries not to let her voice express her emotions. Andrew hangs up. He looks at the tide in the distance and says nothing. Abby is pregnant. He was drunk that day. She is pregnant. What qualifications does he have to keep Nina? He has no reason or qualification to say anything to keep her. Nina is destined not to belong to him. They meet again three years later. He thinks it is a lucky return. He didn't expect God to play such a cruel joke on him. Dreams are always fragile. Andrew dares not to look at Nina. He is afraid that he will hold her in his arms and beg her to stay again. Abby is pregnant. He has no joy of fatherhood at all. In this case, if he says he wants to be with Nina, it's an insult to Nina. What qualifications does he have to let her stay? He's going to lose Nina forever. He is heartbroken and slowly says, Okay, I'll take you back. Nina wants to smile at Andrew, but her face is too stiff to smile. Isn't that good? Andrew is going to be a father. She should congratulate him, right? But why is she so down? They go to the direction of the villa in silence. They walk slowly as if they want to extend their time together for even a second. Sooner or later, however, they will turn around to say goodbye and disappear into each other's eyes. As soon as they get to the gate of the villa, Snowball jumps over with cheers. Nina picks up Snowball and puts her face on its little face. Snowball, I have to go. Goodbye. Andrew stands by all the time and hears Nina say so. He says softly, Nina, take Snowball. It's the gift I prepared for you. I. Nina hesitates. Abby also likes Snowball. If Andrew gives Snowball to her, will Abby be upset? Nina, take it. Snowball loves you. Andrew says, turning to the table next to him. He opens the drawer and takes out something. Nina, close your eyes. I have another present for you. Andrew says softly. His amber eyes are full of sadness. Nina refuses without thinking. Andrew, I accept Snowball. But I can't take anything else. Whatever you send, I don't want it. Andrew is disappointed. Nina, are you mad at me? You blame me for not waiting for you, right? Nina's very upset. How could she be angry with Andrew? She will never be angry with him. Because she disappeared first and gave up. She should have said sorry to Andrew. Andrew unfolds his clenched palm, and what Nina sees is a unique jewelry box. Andrew opens the jewelry box, and the bright light comes out of the box in an instant. This is a unique diamond ring. There are seven diamonds embedded in the ring of platinum. In the middle is a four-carat diamond. It has three diamond leaves on each side. The small leaves are delicate and elegant, setting off the big diamond in the middle. It glows with brilliance. Both design and cutting are first class. It's absolutely valuable. She can see that he has carefully chosen the unique style. Andrew pulls Nina's hand to put the ring on her. Actually, I bought this ring three years ago. I wanted to use it to propose to you on your 18th birthday. Nina instinctively clenches her hand to keep Andrew from putting the ring on her. Andrew, I really can't take it. You and Abby are getting married. Give it to her. Andrew looks up at Nina. His amber eyes are full of gaunt blood. This is the ring I bought for you. I can only give it to you. No, I really can't. Accept it. Andrew, this gift is too expensive. Andrew's face turns pale. There is a sad smile on his handsome face. He doesn't force Nina anymore and takes back his hand. Nina just breathes a sigh of relief and thinks he has been convinced. But Andrew throws the ring out of the window. Andrew. Nina's face turns pale, too. Her eyes are wide open. Andrew throws away such a valuable ring. 
She blames herself. Maybe she should pretend to take it and put it back in the drawer later. You don't want it. It's useless and of no value to me. Andrew whispers. His voice is full of exhaustion and loss. Nina is very moved. Andrew is too attached to her. She can't pay back at all. I'm sorry. Now the only thing Nina can do is to say it softly. Don't say sorry. Never say sorry to Andrew. Andrew shakes his head slightly at Nina. He holds out his arms to her. Nina, let's hug. Nina holds back her tears and walks up to Andrew. She loops her arm around his waist. Her nose is filled with a light mint aroma. What a clean and gentle taste. Andrew is always gentle and humble and considerate. Nina's tears finally slip silently. Andrew, goodbye. After a long time, the two separate. They find tears in each other's eyes. Where do you live? I'll take you back. Andrew turns and picks up the car key from the sofa. No, I'll take a taxi back. Nina stops him. If Lucian sees Andrew send her back, she and Andrew will be punished by him. There are all villas around here. There are no taxis. I'll take you downtown and then you can take a taxi back, okay? Andrew senses Nina's panic. There is a slight loss in his heart. Nina must not want her boyfriend to see her with him. Is she afraid her boyfriend will be jealous? It seems that she really loves the man named Lucian. Andrew suddenly finds himself so jealous of Lucian. He is on the verge of madness with jealousy. But he can only try to suppress his emotions and pretend to smile. He drives Nina downtown in silence. Nina, goodbye. Keep in touch and let me know you have a good life. Okay. Goodbye. Nina looks around like a thief for fear that Lucian will see her with Andrew. Nina doesn't react until the door is closed and Andrew is about to leave. She says, Andrew, take care of yourself. Andrew in the car gives Nina a, a gentle smile. The black RV leaves. Looking at the smaller and smaller shadow of the RV, Nina suddenly cries. She is helpless. It's dark, but city sea at night is more charming than that during the day. Neon lights reflect the prosperity of the city, and there are well-dressed men and women everywhere. The closer the taxi gets to home, the more uneasy she gets. What will meet her? Is it insulting, beating, or something? No matter what it is, Nina is sure it's a tough night. All the lights in Lucian's villa are on. Nina can feel the depressing atmosphere outside. The servant sees Nina coming back and quickly opens the door. She turns her head excitedly and shouts, Master, Miss Morrison is back. Paige comes running. She takes Nina's hand. Miss Morrison, you're back. Damn kidnappers. We're worried about you. How did you escape? Nina freezes. How can she explain to Lucian how she escaped? She can't say Andrew saved her. She has to protect Andrew and not let Lucian hurt him. Where is Lucian? Nina asks Paige. Paige's expression suddenly becomes complicated. She points to the living room inside and whispers in Nina's ear, Master is alone in it. He didn't sleep or eat yesterday. He looked for you everywhere. He looked for her everywhere and didn't eat or sleep. Nina looks at Paige in surprise. Is she talking about Lucian? Will Lucian worry about a mistress? With doubts and fears, Nina goes to the living room of the villa. There have never been so many people in the villa. Two rows of uniformed police stand at the door, facing a group of men in black long windbreaker and sunglasses. Everyone looks serious, which makes people feel great pressure. Seeing Nina come in, they all turn their heads to see her. They are surprised but none of them dares to talk. The atmosphere is oppressive. Nina sees Lucian at a glance. He sits on the big sofa in the middle of the living room. The collar of the white shirt is open. His short black hair is a bit messy and he has obvious dark circles. His handsome face is tired and haggard. Nina stops at the door. The atmosphere is terrible. 
She wants to turn around and escape. But Lucian looks up at the door. When he finds Nina standing at the door, his eyes are filled with anger. His eyes are as sharp as a knife. Nina is guilty. Lucian's eyes scare her back a step. Lucian doesn't get up and sits angrily on the sofa. He looks at Nina. Nina is shaken by his eyes. She instinctively hugs Snowball in her arms. Snowball can't breathe. It barks. Where have you been? Lucian's tone is bland, but Nina recognizes his ferocity and anger. Nina bites her lip and loses the courage to lie. This man is terrible. If he finds out that she lies, she will only die worse. Nina, speak. Lucian says word for word. He is furious. Nina can't say nothing. Lucian is on the verge of rage. Nina takes a deep breath. She clenches her fist and plucks up courage to come to him. She just wants to say that she was sneaking back when the kidnappers didn't notice, but suddenly she sees some pictures on the tea table in front of Lucian. The biggest and most striking is the picture of her walking with Andrew on the beach. The angle of the picture is strange. Nina, who is full of worries, is photographed beautifully. There is even a faint smile on her face. Nina is suddenly at a loss. Since Lucian sees the pictures of them walking on the private beach, he must have seen the pictures of her and Andrew saying goodbye in the downtown. It will be ridiculous if she now says she has sneaked back from the kidnappers. That's insulting Lucian's IQ. What should she say? Nina's panicked. She doesn't know what excuses she has to use to convince Lucian. Nina, I ask you for the last time. Where have you been? Lucian looks up at her coldly. His face is gloomy. His eyes are red. Nina takes a deep breath and simply replies, I was kidnapped by the kidnappers and saved by Andrew. Andrew stayed me at his house all night because I was scared and not feeling well. Nina's voice sounds calm. In fact, her heart is very nervous. It's like hundreds of fawn trying to hit her. And then... Lucian reaches for the pictures on the tea table and looks at them indifferently. Then I thought I was better and he sent me back. Nina almost believes her words. Nina, do you think I'm a fool? Why did the man buy you a dress last time? Why did he just save you this time? You spent the night in the villa with him. Lucian rises abruptly. His blood-red eyes glare at her. He smashes the pictures in his hand on her head. Ah, Nina is unprepared and hit. The sharp pain spreads all over her body. Nina, you are bolder and bolder. Lucian raises his foot and kicks on the tea table in front of him. The tea table is broken. The police and bodyguards around him dare not speak. Nina's face is pale. Her big black eyes look at Lucian in horror. The man is terrible when he is angry. She is really scared. Nina. Why don't you explain? Aren't you smart? Why don't you speak? Lucian yells. He comes to Nina and squeezes her jaw. Nina screams. It hurts too much. She feels her chin crumbling. He is my former neighbor. It's not what you think. Nina explains incoherently, shrinking back in fear. Neighbor. Then, why didn't you answer the phone? What did you do with him last night? Lucian's face is only a few centimeters from Nina's, and the tip of his nose almost touches her nose. In his bloodshot pupils, Nina sees her pale face. She is slapped in the face before she can speak. Nina is hit and falls on the sofa. Her ears are buzzing. Her nose is itchy. Something comes out. She reaches out and feels it. It is hot and sticky. It is blood. But Lucian is not satisfied. He picks Nina up from the sofa. He pinches her chin in one hand and pulls her long hair in the other, forcing her to look up at him. Nina, you're dying, Lucian says angrily. His red eyes are full of anger. He told the police and all the people he knew in the underworld to find her. As a result, they found one of her lost hairpins in Haushan. There was blood seeping into the earth. He didn't sleep all night because he thought she was dead. He looked for her himself. 
As a result, she came back as if nothing happened. When he was too worried to eat or sleep, she took a leisurely walk on the beach with other men. Even if her cell phone is dead, she can borrow a cell phone to call him. What does she think he is? He is nothing in her mind. She doesn't take him seriously at all. Did she and Andrew really do nothing? Lucian squints. Get out of here. He waves to a group of bodyguards and police in the living room. These people are secretly relieved. Lucian is not angry with them so they leave quickly. They are afraid that they will be punished later. Everyone in the living room is gone. Lucian comes to Nina and tears her clothes. What are you doing? Nina is shocked. What does this psychopath want to do? He's not going to rape her in the living room, is he? Lucian ignores her resistance. He tears Nina's clothes to pieces. Nina blushes and tries to cover herself with her hands. Lucian impatiently pulls her hand and puts it behind her. The pain lets Nina's tears flow out. Lucian's cold eyes look at her body mercilessly. It's like she's just an object, not a living, emotional person. Nina bites her lips and closes her eyes in shame. Look. Enjoy it. Anyway, she is just a humble mistress. She can only obey the master's inspection. She can't resist, let alone feel dissatisfied. Lucian is relieved after examining it carefully. He says indifferently, Fortunately, I don't find anything that I shouldn't have found. Otherwise you will die ugly. Nina suddenly wakes up. Lucian is trying to find a clue in her. He suspected that she has slept with Andrew so he has to check her body. Nina looks at Lucian coldly and says scornfully, Lucian, you are lewd and think others are just as lewd as you. Hearing Nina's words, Lucian pulls her hair to bring her face to him. His blazing breath sprays her face. His angry eyes are fixed on her. Lucian is also surprised. If other women did it, he will beat her up. But in the face of Nina, he can't do anything. There are no abnormal marks on her. She and the man may have done nothing. Lucian keeps persuading herself. Nina has closed her eyes and is ready for another slap. Kill me. I've lived enough anyway. Nina doesn't get hit. She opens her eyes in surprise. Lucian's bloodthirsty eyes tighten. He walks up to Nina with a sneer. Nina is frightened by his ghostly eyes. She tries desperately to push his hand away. What are you doing? Lucian sneers. Do what men and women do. His low voice is like the devil from hell. Nina, you said I am lewd. Today I'll let you know what's real lewdness. Don't touch me, you devil. Nina responds. Lucian's bloodthirsty eyes make her tremble, and she knows that she is a lamb to be slaughtered. In front of Lucian, Nina's strength is not worth mentioning at all. Realizing this, Nina gives up resistance. She doesn't speak or look at him. Like a piece of ice, she lets Lucian hold her upstairs. Her pale face is expressionless. Lucian is even more angry at her stubborn and cold look. When they get to the bedroom, Lucian throws Nina on the bed. Although the soft bed is elastic, Nina still covers her belly instinctively. She suddenly realizes in horror that she has a baby in her stomach. She realizes that the baby can't bear any punishment from Lucian. No way. She can't fight Lucian. If she fights, it will only affect the innocent baby in her stomach. Nina opens her eyes. Her tone is a little pleading and begging. Lucian, I really didn't betray you. Can you not be so fierce? Lucian sneers. He comes to Nina and says, Nina, aren't you stubborn? Don't you like not to talk? Why do you beg me now? I, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't stay out. I should contact you first after being kidnapped. Hearing her say that, Lucian's gloomy face is even worse. His eyes are fixed on her. Damn. She was kidnapped and didn't ask him for help first. She didn't contact him. Lucian roars. You're just cruel. Don't fawn on me. If you don't have a baby in your stomach, 
You will have scolded me. Despite Nina's resistance, Lucian puts Nina's hands behind her with one hand, and gently strokes Nina's slightly raised belly with the other. Lucian is gentle and even has a smile on his face, but Nina is horrified. What the hell is this man doing? Nina stares at Lucian in horror. Lucian, what are you doing? Lucian clenches her fist and puts it on Nina's stomach. He has a cruel smile on his face. He whispers to Nina, Nina, if my fist goes down, guess what happens to the baby in your stomach? Nina is crying. She curls up desperately, trying to avoid Lucian. She cries and begs, no. Don't touch my baby. Punish me. Don't hurt my baby. Please. Her tears run down the corner of her eyes. Her white body is like a fresh magnolia. Lucian pulls the tie off his neck and ties Nina's arms tightly. He takes two other ties out of the closet and ties Nina's feet to the end of the bed. Lucian looks at Nina's frightened eyes with satisfaction. In Nina's eyes, his shadow is clearly reflected. He's in Nina's eyes. That's fine. Nina can't remember how Lucian tortures her. At last, she is half asleep. Lucian seems to have taken her to the bath. His movements are gentle and caring, as if she were a fragile porcelain doll. But Nina thinks it must be her fantasy. Lucian wants to kill her. How could he be so gentle with her? The early morning sun shines through the curtains on the big bed. Nina opens her eyes and finds Lucian looking at her. Nina quickly wraps herself in a quilt. Her body also moves secretly under the quilt to the bedside, not wanting to touch Lucian's body. Lucian's thighs are clinging to her. He senses Nina's movement and pulls Nina into his arms. He holds her tightly. Nina has to smile and say carefully, I want to go to the bathroom. Don't go. Stay with me. Lucian's eyes are closed and there is no expression on his face. What a bully he is. How could he not let me go to the bathroom? Prisoners in prison are also free to go to the toilet. Nina murmurs in her heart but does not dare to resist. Well, she's not in a hurry anyway. She can stay in bed with him. In a moment she pees on the bed and disgusts him. It's better that he doesn't touch her in the future. Thinking about it, Nina smiles. But Lucian misunderstands the smile. He thinks Nina is happy that he lets her accompany him. His handsome and cold face softens a little. They just lie in silence. Listening to the early birds chirping in the garden outside the window, Nina suddenly has an illusion as if she has returned to her childhood. At that time, she lay in bed quietly. She waited for her mother to wake herself up. She liked her mother to reach into the quilt and pull herself up. She liked her mother's angry and spoiled expression. At that time, she was a little princess who was cared for. The quiet time is fleeting, and Lucian's voice breaks the silence. Nina, I have a question. Lucian's voice is faint. Nina doesn't even recognize that his voice is a little nervous. Huh? Nina responds. Nina. Do you love me? Lucian asks, closing his eyes. Only with his eyes closed can he ask that. A few months ago he would have been disgusted and intolerable when he heard of the problem. He never thought that one day he will ask a woman like this. In his eyes, women are clothes that can be thrown away at any time. They don't even count as pets. To feel sad for a woman is the behavior of the inferior. But today, he asks Nina about it. Lucian's words stun Nina. How could he ask that? How could he say love to her? Is he ill? Doesn't he just want women's bodies? Why does he want women's hearts? Lucian, you're too greedy. I'm just your mistress. I'm just a commodity. When my father's operation is finished, we will not owe each other. You talk to me about love. Sorry. You don't have that qualification. My heart is not for sale. Nina shakes her head and says firmly, No. I don't love you. Lucian's hand clenches under the quilt. 
He suddenly turns to sit up and looks down at Nina's face from above. There is a faint anger in his voice. What did you say? Say it again. Nina's moist eyes look at him coldly. I will not change my answer. Lucian, I don't love you. Lucian is very angry. His thin lips purse a cruel arc. He lifts Nina's chin with his big hand. Do you know the consequences of your remark? Nina looks at him bravely. I'm just your mistress. I've never heard of a master wanting a mistress's heart. You are too greedy. Lucian's mad. As soon as Nina finishes speaking, he slaps her hard. He is so strong that Nina is hit on the other side of the bed. Nina's eyes are blurry. Her ears are buzzing and there is a fishy smell in his mouth. She touches her face with her hand, but she has no sense at all. She's numb. Her face swells in a flash. Yesterday's bruise makes her face miserable. Mistress. I'll let you know what a real mistress is. Lucian says coldly. He presses the bell by the bed. What can I do for you, young master? Ryan's voice comes from the loudspeaker. Ryan, get the handcuffs and fetters. Lucian's voice is cold. Nina freezes. What are handcuffs and fetters? What does Lucian want to do? Ryan takes the handcuffs and shackles and respectfully gives them to Lucian. He gives Nina a sympathetic look. She annoyed young master. Young master is very kind to her. He gave her a very expensive necklace. After her disappearance, young master didn't eat or drink for a day or a night. What happened? Why does it seem that young master wants to lock her up? Get out of here. Lucian gives Ryan a cold look. Ryan is so scared that he slips out. Lucian, what are you doing? Nina is so scared that she hugs her body and desperately shrinks to the corner. Lucian says coldly, lock you up. Don't run around. Since you are a mistress, follow the rules. Don't forget I bought you. You pervert. You're crazy. Nina struggles, but she can't fight at all. Lucian is too strong. Her hands and feet are locked. Lucian, you lunatic. I'm your mistress. But isn't mistress free at all? Nina shouts angrily. Freedom. Lucian stares at her. Nina, you're not free in your life. Lucian's words make Nina's fantasy disappear. Paige. Lucian calls Paige in to wash Nina's face. He goes downstairs. Nina stares at Lucian's back. There is a fire in her eyes. Paige sighs when he sees Nina. Miss Morrison, you need to understand young master. He's afraid you're missing again. He was worried after you were kidnapped. Nina sneers. He's worried about me. He's worried about losing his dog. He's just an inhuman beast. Miss Morrison, don't say that. Young master is a little grumpy. In fact, young master cares about you very much. Otherwise he wouldn't let so many people look for you. Paige defends Lucian. If he cares about me, will he beat me like this? Nina looks up. Her face is still bruised. Paige sighs heavily. Young master is very angry so he did it. As long as you are obedient, he will let you go in a few days if he isn't angry. Obedient. Whether I obey or not is the same. Anyway, I'm one of his pets. He is good to me when he is in a good mood. When he is in a bad mood, he will beat and scold me. Pet. She's not even a pet. Which owner will beat the pet like this and lock it up? Nina gives a wry smile. Nina's nose suddenly stings. She sits by the window, bending her legs slowly. She hugs her knees with her hands, forming a crouching self-protection position. Yesterday's time with Andrew becomes her only comfort. Although that time is short, it is beautiful and warm. It is like a sun shining into her dark and painful life. Nina looks at the cold, metallic handcuffs on her arms and the fetters on her ankles, biting her lips. She raises her head and blinks hard not to let the tears come out. She will never cry for Lucian again. He doesn't deserve it. Her face hurts and her back is bruised. Lucian was too strong yesterday.
This is the worst time he has ever hit her. Two slaps yesterday and just now almost disfigure her face. Her eyes are so swollen that they can't open. Page sighs. Young master is a little too much this time. Miss Morrison is pregnant. How could he hit her like this? Paige comes to Nina with a cold towel. Miss Morrison, I'll help you reduce the swelling. Nina doesn't move. She is like a dull wooden man. Paige puts the cold towel gently on her face. There is ice in the towel. The coolness eases the sting on her face. Bang. The door is suddenly kicked open from the outside. Lucian stands at the door with a gloomy face. His bleak eyes glare at Paige. Get out. Yes, young master. Paige says respectfully. She takes a sympathetic look at Nina and walks out from Lucian with a towel. At the door, Paige looks back and gives Nina a worried look. Bang. Lucian closes the door. The loud noise makes Nina's ears hurt a little. Nina lowers her head and eyes. She is watching her hands locked together. She doesn't look at Lucian at all. Young master, Miss Morrison, dinner is ready. Paige knocks on the door and shouts outside. Nina is going to sleep. She is too tired. Lucian seems to have eaten stimulant just now. He tortures her over and over and exhausts her. As soon as he gets off her, she closes her eyes. After sleeping with her for so long, Lucian is a little hungry. He pats Nina on the face. Let's have dinner. Nina closes her eyes and mumbles, No, I'm going to sleep. Looking at Nina's bruised face, Lucian is a little upset. This little woman is so disobedient. As long as she's a little bit more obedient, he won't do this to her. Let's have dinner. Even if you don't eat it, the baby in your stomach will eat it. He is concerned about her, but he is very serious. Nina reluctantly gets pulled out of bed by Lucian. Suddenly, some warm liquid comes out of her crotch. Nina thinks it is Lucian's semen. She covers her body with a quilt and wipes it with a paper towel. When she throws the paper towel, she is horrified to find that there are red blood in the white semen. Ah! Nina screams and looks at Lucian in horror. Blood. Lucian frowns. He makes a quick call. Call drive. Wong. Doctor. Wong rushes over with her physician bag. The servants and housekeepers are standing in the hall. There is a bit of traffic jam. So drive. Wong comes a little slowly. Lucian has smashed several antique vases. Well. Doctor. Wong pushes her glasses on the bridge of her nose and looks at Lucian who is gloomy by the window. What? Speak up. Lucian doesn't care that doctor. Wong is a female doctor and speaks to her rudely. President Gray, your wife is pregnant, so you can't indulge. Doctor. Wong takes an envious look at Nina. It can be seen that they are harmonious and have sex frequently. Thinking of her husband, drive. Wong sighs in her heart. After listening to Dr. Wang's words, Nina's bruised face suddenly turns red. She lowers her eyes and is embarrassed to look at Dr. Wong. Lucian frowns and impatiently says, Is her bleeding serious? Dr. Wong is shocked by his eyes and her voice is shaking, She's okay. I'll give her some medicine to protect her baby. It's Chinese patent medicine and has no effect on the fetus. That's good. Nina and Lucian are relieved at the same time. Have a good rest. I'll ask Paige to make you something to eat. Lucian and Dr. Wong go downstairs. Nina lies in bed and doesn't want to sleep at all. She hears it is safe to have sex in the middle of pregnancy. She really didn't expect her to bleed. Lucian's movements are too fierce and too frequent. Lucian is a man with a strong desire. It's hard to control him. No, I can't stay with him any longer. If I stay any longer, the baby in my stomach will be in danger. I have to escape. Nina makes up her mind. But what about dad? Nina picks up her phone and dials familiar numbers. She is really an unfilial daughter. Dad has been in hospital for a long time but she only visited him twice. 
Lucian pesters her every day so she has no personal time at all. She doesn't know if dad is okay now. The phone is connected. At the other end of the phone comes a loving voice. Hello. Nina. Hello, dad. Nina chokes and says, dad, are you okay now? How is your health? I'm in good health. The operation is scheduled for the day after tomorrow. The hospital has arranged the best doctor for me. Nina, don't worry. Barry is also a little sad. Last time he heard Nina said that she borrowed the operation fee from a friend. She must be working hard to pay back now. Dad, it's good that you're healthy. When your operation is over, I will visit you. Nina says in a hurry because she has heard the footsteps of going upstairs. Lucian doesn't allow her to get in touch with the outside world. He wants to own all her world. Nina has little contact with her former friends. Dad, take good care of yourself. I'll hang up first. As soon as Nina hangs up, Lucian and Paige and Kitty come in. Paige has a table in her hand. Kitty is holding a silver tray full of all kinds of food. They quickly put the small table on the bed and put the tray in place. The two servants leave the room quickly. Eat them. Lucian orders Nina and he picks up his chopsticks and starts eating. Nina is hungry, too. She looks at the handcuffs on her wrist and stares at Lucian. How can she eat with her hands tied together? Lucian finds out Nina isn't eating. He frowns. Why don't you eat? Is this little woman losing her temper? I want to eat but I can't pick up chopsticks. Nina says impatiently. Oh, Lucian remembers the handcuffs on her wrist. He fumbles in his pocket for a while but he can't find the key. Maybe he just left it downstairs. Lucian moves the small table closer to Nina. He scoops a spoonful of turtle soup to Nina's mouth. Nina's eyes widen in surprise. Is Lucian going to feed her? Her body instinctively retreats. Drink it. Lucian orders her. He feeds women soup for the first time, but she doesn't want to drink it. Nina is helpless. Is he crazy? He just slapped her in the face and locked her up. Now he's going to feed her soup. Does he pretend to be gentle? The soup slowly cools in the spoon. Nina hasn't opened her mouth yet. Lucian takes back his hand. His face becomes as cold as ice. Okay, you don't drink it. Then you starve to death. Anyway, you have a baby in your stomach. It's not lonely to die together. His words remind Nina that she has a baby in her stomach. She can't be so headstrong. I drink. Nina stops Lucian who gets up to leave. She opens her mouth. She doesn't notice the flash of light in Lucian's eyes. Nina is fed by Lucian. Lucian is a strict breeder. Whenever Nina says she doesn't want to eat, Lucian's stern eyes make her open her mouth. Nina thinks she's never been so full. She eats most of the food on the table. The dessert is walnut milk with crystal sugar. Nina doesn't eat walnuts since she was a child. She hates the taste of walnuts. This time she is forced by Lucian to eat more than half of it. She wrinkles her face in agony. She says she is full and can't eat at all. Lucian just lets Nina go. Nina has a good sleep after she is full. She feels much better. Lucian isn't here, so she is alone in the big bed. If she doesn't think about the handcuffs and shackles, it's a perfect time. Miss Morrison, dinner is ready. Paige shouts outside the door. Nina looks at the clock on the wall. It's six o'clock. It's time to eat again. She ate a lot at noon so she's still full now. She gets up slowly and follows Paige downstairs. Paige smiles and says, Anne is back for dinner today. Anne. Nina is suddenly cold. She has a bad impression of Lucian's sister. She is an arrogant lady. She thinks she's a troublemaker. She comes to the dining room. Lucian is reading the newspaper, and Anne is sitting next to him playing with her mobile phone. Seeing Nina, Anne turns her head curiously and asks, Lucian, why hasn't this woman left? 
Anne is in college and lives near the university town. She seldom comes back. Lucian stares at the paper and doesn't speak. She doesn't know whether he doesn't hear or deliberately doesn't answer. Anne feels a little embarrassed. She says rudely to Nina, Miss, you'd better know yourself. Don't stay in my house all the time. Nina raises her handcuffed wrist. It's not that I don't want to leave. Your brother handcuffed me to keep me from leaving. Lucian's eyes are finally removed from the newspaper. He just read the news in the newspaper that a piece of land tendered by Gray family was bought by Williams family. This is the last commercial land in the golden area of the city center. Gray family spent a lot of money but he didn't expect to lose in the end. And he actually read the news in the newspaper. How do his subordinates work? They didn't report to him. He is upset by the quarrel of the two women around him. He stands up and shouts with a cold face, Get out of here if you don't want to eat. He picks up the suit on the sofa and walks out the door. Young master, where are you going? Don't you eat. Paige runs after him. I go to the company. Take care of Nina. With that, Lucian leaves. Only Nina and Anne are left in the dining room. Seeing Anne's arrogance, Nina has no appetite at all. She stands up and says coldly to Anne, take your time. I'll go back first. She turns to leave. Stop. Anne says, am I so disgusted? Can't you even eat after you see me? Nina wants to say yes, but she holds back. After all, she lives in their house. No, I don't have a good appetite. Paige says quickly, Miss Morrison, you'd better have some. Even if you don't want to eat, the baby in your stomach should eat. Pregnant women are not allowed to skip meals. Anne frowns when she hears Paige. Lucian should have let this woman leave as soon as possible. How can he get her to have his baby? She says sarcastically, Oh, Miss Morrison, I didn't expect my brother to make you pregnant. Do you think you can marry into Gray family if you are pregnant? Nina says indifferently, I'm sorry I don't think so. You think too much. Nina's attitude angers Anne. Her voice is sharper. You don't think so. My brother has so many women. Which one is pregnant? You are a cunning woman. You lied to my brother. Nina is speechless. Don't think you can marry my brother with this child in your belly. Don't think about it. Our family doesn't recognize this child. Nina gives a wry smile and shakes her head. She doesn't want to marry into Gray family. It's normal that Gray family doesn't recognize this child. This child is not Lucian's at all. Anne is even more angry to see Nina laughing. What are you laughing at? Do you think you can change from a mistress to a young mistress of Gray family with my brother's temporary love for you? Nina shrugs and says coldly, Sorry, I'm not interested in being a young mistress of Gray family. Besides, this child is not your brother's. Don't think too much. What? When Nina finishes, Anne and Paige open their eyes in surprise. Anne points to Nina and shivers, You're crazy. How dare you betray my brother? You don't want to live. I'm going to call my brother and tell him that the baby in your stomach is not his. Paige comes up, too. Miss Morrison, don't talk nonsense. Young master seldom cares so much about a woman. Because she is pregnant with his baby. If young master knows that this child is not his, my God. She can't even think about it. Don't bother. Your brother knows it. Nina says coldly, turning to leave. What an arrogant woman. Paige, hit her. Since her child is not my brother's, why does she live in our house? Paige, get her out. Anne shivers with Nina's attitude. Paige doesn't dare to hit Nina. Lucian and Miss Morrison always quarrel, but she knows young master likes her. Otherwise, he will not allow her to live in Gray family with another person's child. Paige, why don't you start? Anne stamps her feet with anger. She has always been the most beloved little princess in the family. 
The domineering Lucian dotes on her. Now they are ignoring her words for a mistress. Let's wait for young master to come back. You need to calm down. Paige can only persuade her. She is a servant and should not be in charge of her master's business. At Paige's words, Anne is more angry. Paige doesn't listen to her and wants to defend this woman. Damn, I don't believe I can't control you as the daughter of Grey family. Anne rushes to Nina and pushes her out. Nina is so scared that she gets out of the way. Her handcuffs were untied just now to eat, but her feet are still locked, so she can't dodge. It seems that Anne is going to teach her a lesson today. Nina takes the fruit knife from the table and puts it in front of her. Miss Gray, if you push me again, I will be rude to you. Anne sneers, you dare not. This is her home. It's a joke if she gets hurt in her own house. With that, she walks over to Nina. She stares at Nina angrily. Nina holds the fruit knife tighter and tighter. She is like a hedgehog on guard. Seeing that Anne has rushed over, Nina is in a panic. She quickly shrinks her hand and wants to take back the knife, but it's too late. The bright blade suddenly cuts Anne's arm, and the blood immediately flows down her white arm. Ah! Anne screams. Paige next to her is stunned. I'll fight you. Anne's temper is not good either. She grabs the soup bowl on the table and smashes it on Nina's head. Nina desperately drags her shackles to hide. Unfortunately, it is too late. The porcelain bowl hits her head severely. She is dizzy. Lucian is in the company calling executives for a meeting when he gets a call from Paige. Young master, come back quickly. Miss Morrison and Anne are fighting. Lucian frowns impatiently. Can't you persuade them? There is a lot of trouble with the operation of the company, but the two women are still fighting. Young master, I can't persuade them. Anne's arm was cut by Miss Morrison. She's bleeding a lot. Paige says in a flurry. Young master loves Anne very much. If something happens to Anne, she can't take responsibility. I'll be right back. Lucian hangs up. He explains to the executives in a hurry and rushes home. As soon as he enters the house, Anne rushes up crying. Lucian, you need to avenge me. She cut my arm with a fruit knife. Anne raises her arm wrapped in gauze and complains to Lucian. Lucian looks at Anne's arm and frowns. Nina is getting bolder. How dare she hurt his sister? He squints and stares ferociously at Nina sitting on the sofa. You cut my sister's arm with a fruit knife. There is a little fluke in his fierce voice. He hopes it is just a misunderstanding. Nina shouldn't be so cruel. Yes, it's me. Nina says indifferently. There is no guilt or uneasiness in her face. With that, Anne cries, Lucian, she doesn't feel guilty for hurting me. I didn't provoke her. How could she do that? Lucian also feels a little strange. Nina is not such a fierce person. Is there any secret? He turns and asks Paige, tell me what happened. Anne takes a look at Paige. Paige gets it. She has to lie. After you left, Miss Morrison said she didn't have an appetite and didn't want to eat. Anne persuaded her, but Miss Morrison got angry. Anne wanted to go over and persuade her but Miss Morrison stabbed Anne with a fruit knife. Nina is speechless. Paige is usually honest and kind. Why doesn't she blush when she lies now? Paige is Lucian's nanny. Lucian trusts her very much. He believes Nina stabbed Anne for no reason. He is furious and tugs at Nina's hair. Nina, you're getting bolder and bolder. How dare you bully my sister? Nina looks up at Lucian. Are you sure it's my fault? Anne is afraid Lucian will know the truth. She runs up to Lucian. Lucian, forget it. I'm not going to let her apologize to me. Just let her leave Grey family. Nina's head was smashed. She may also be in pain. It's a pity that her hair is too long so she can't see if her forehead is swollen. If only she had smashed the bowl on her face just now. Anne thinks maliciously in her heart. 
Lucian touches Anne's hair. Anne, is it still painful? Anne pouts up, pretending to be aggrieved. It hurts. If Dad knows I was bullied, he will be sad. Lucian's face darkens when Anne mentions Dad. He comes to Nina with a cold face and says, Nina, apologize to my sister. Nina's eyes widen in surprise. What? Just now Anne came and rubbed against the knife. She didn't mean to stab her. Besides, she smashed her head with a bowl. Now she's in pain, too. Why make her apologize? Nina grits her lips stubbornly. She is adamant not to apologize. Lucian gets angry. Nina, do you apologize or not? Nina is still silent. Anne says, look at her. She doesn't admit it. Shut her up in the black house. She won't be so arrogant then. Lucian frowns. He stares angrily at Nina. He says coldly, call Ryan. Throw her in the little black house. The little black house is in the most remote corner of Grey family's mansion. Only servants who make a big mistake are thrown there. There is no sunshine all the year round. It's cold and dark. People can't stay there for long. No matter how strong they are, they will collapse. Gray family once locked two servants there, and then they were all mad. There is a smug smile on Anne's face. You can't beat me. I'm my brother's sister. You're just a woman with other people's child. You dare to fight me. Nina is shocked when she sees the happy smile on Anne's face. It seems that this little black house is not a good place. She quietly touches her pocket with her hand. Fortunately, the mobile phone is in it. With the heavy sound of the iron door, Nina is pushed into the black house by Ryan and a group of housekeepers. The cold floor is greasy, and the room is so dark that there is hardly any light in it. The first impression Nina gets from the black house was depression, coldness and horror. Nina curls up in the corner. She puts her head on her arm. It's ridiculous. Just now she wanted to explain. She thinks Lucian will at least listen to her explanation. She thinks they has been together so long that Lucian knows her. She is too naive. Who does she think she is? She's just a mistress, a plaything. When the plaything conflicts with his sister, even if the plaything has no fault at all, she will still be punished. The heavy iron door is pushed open from the outside. Paige comes in with a thick blanket. This is what young master asked me to send in. In the sun, Paige looks at Nina apologetically. She shouldn't have lied. But as a servant, she needs to live here and listen to her masters. Nina doesn't speak. Paige adds, young master is angry now. When he's not angry, he'll take you out. Young master still loves you very much, otherwise he won't let me send such a thick blanket. These blankets are for young master's own use. They are made of pure worsted cashmere. A blanket is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Paige finds it a pity to put them on the dirty floor. Nina still doesn't speak. She is so tired that she doesn't want to talk to anyone. She is disappointed. Lucian doesn't even trust her. Paige sighs and walks out of the black house. The room falls into darkness again. Dad is going to have an operation tomorrow. She hopes Lucian will not break his promise. When the operation is over, she must leave. She will endure another day. Nina takes out her cell phone and calls her sister Grace. Grace, this is Nina. Grace is at the bar with a group of men. She is frustrated by Nina's phone call. She says impatiently, that's your father, not mine. Go to the hospital and visit him yourself. Nina is very sad. Even her sister says that. However, she still resists the impulse to hang up the phone and asks Grace kindly. I can't visit dad tomorrow. Please visit him for me. Remember, when dad's operation is over, move him from that hospital. Where, without Lucian paying for his later treatment, the operation will be useless. I don't have the money to treat him. Grace, don't worry about money. I have money. 
I have a safe in XX Bank, which contains more than 100,000 cash and some jewelry. I'll tell you the code. Take the money and take Dad and Aunt Doris away. Lucian is a very generous master. Nina saves a lot of money in just over two months with him. Grace hears that Nina has a lot of money. She becomes greedy. Okay. You tell me the code of the safe. I promise to transfer Dad to a hospital with good security condition. Grace carefully writes down the password. She feels it necessary to greet her rich sister. Nina, are you pregnant? Is Lucian happy? Will he reward you a lot of money? Grace is jealous. Nina gives a wry smile. How could he be happy? The child is not his at all. He's putting me in a dungeon now. Grace is happy but pretends. What's going on? Nina, whose is this kid? Nina sighs. Four months ago, a man pretended to be your friend and called me. He said you were drunk at the hotel and asked me to pick you up. I went to the hotel and entered the room he said, but I didn't find you and was raped by a man. The child in my stomach is the man's. Grace is stunned. Nina got pregnant that night. But the man that night was Lucian. Nina doesn't even know about it. Does Lucian know about it? Does President Gray know that this kid is not his? He knows. Because the time is not right. I was pregnant when I was with Lucian. He knew it as soon as he counted the days. That is great. Nina and Lucian don't know about it. She will not be exposed. Grace comes up with an idea. God gives her a chance to make her rich. She's worried that she can't pay back her millions of gambling debts. Now God gives her a big gift. Nina, you said you were in a dungeon. Where is the dungeon? I'll save you. Grace pretends to be kind. Nina is moved. At the critical moment, she can only rely on her own relatives. Although she is not her own sister, she is moved that she cares about her so much. It's no use. Gray family is heavily guarded. You can't help me out unless Lucian wants to let me go. Grace thinks quickly. She has to get Nina out. Only in this way can her plan come true. Even if Gray family is heavily guarded, she can do it. Lucian trusts Ryan. She can cheat Ryan. After she winks at him and she takes off her clothes, he will be absolutely responsive. Ryan, what are you doing? Grace calls Ryan. Grace, it's you. Why do you call me? Ryan is excited. He's been in love with Grace for nearly 10 years. She is the perfect goddess in his heart. The goddess offers to call him. He is almost flattered. I miss you. Are you free at night? How about coming to my house for a drink? Grace says sensually. I'm free. I will go at night. Ryan is very happy when he hangs up. At night Ryan knocks on Grace's door with two bottles of red wine. It's been a long time in the little black house. Nina doesn't dare to play games on her cell phone. The cell phone is going to be dead. She opens her eyes to the darkness. She sees Andrew's face. Andrew, is he okay? He must be very happy, right? She can see that Abby loves him. They match very well. Her face suddenly itches. It seems that something is crawling. Nina touches it with her hand. It is wet. Then she knows that she is crying. Andrew, where are you? Do you know I miss you? On the big bed of Grace's apartment, two figures are intertwined. After calming down, Grace lies in Ryan's arms and gently strokes his chest with her hand. Ryan, I want you to do one thing. What is it? I have a sister, Nina. She's with Lucian. She called me this afternoon and said she is in a dungeon. Ryan's eyes widen in surprise. Nina is your sister. That's impossible. Your surnames are different. Grace lights a cigarette. She's my stepfather's daughter. I have the same last name as my mother. I see. That night you asked me to call her to accompany Lucian. Yes, it's her. And she was pregnant that night. Ryan is even more surprised. No wonder she is pregnant at the wrong time. 
She was pregnant that night. But Lucian doesn't seem to know that the baby in her stomach is his. He has been scolding the child. Grace smiles smugly. Nina doesn't know that kid is Lucian's either. We can do a profitable business. Grace says about her plan. Ryan says after listening, Grace, you are so smart. You can think of such an idea. Dot dot dot. Nina's cell phone suddenly rings. It's Grace. Hello, Grace. Is dad's operation a success? Nina asks a little uneasily. It is successful. First class doctors use first class instruments. Grace says, Nina, I'm in Gray family's house with Ryan now. Ryan has the key to the dungeon. When the servants have lunch, we'll pick you up. Nina freezes. She can predict how angry Lucian will be if he knows she has escaped. But dad's operation has been successful. She saves enough money for dad to keep fit. She quickly makes up her mind and says to Grace, Okay, I'll wait for you here. Nina waits a long time before she hears the soft opening sound of the iron door. It's Grace. Nina stands up excited. The iron door is opened, and the dazzling sunlight outside makes Nina close her eyes. Nina's missing. The servant hurries to report the news to Lucian. Lucian smashes the table with his fist. He says angrily, look for her. You don't have to come back if you can't find her. The servants search Gray family together. They find only a piece of shackles that has been broken. When Paige puts the shackles in front of Lucian, Lucian's eyes can kill people. He yanks Paige's collar. Didn't I ask you to take good care of her? Why did she escape? Paige is Lucian's nanny. Lucian always treats her politely. This is the first time he embarrasses her in front of others. I. The iron door was opened with a key. Young master, Gray family must have an mole. Paige explains quickly. While Gray family is investigating, Nina is secretly sent to an apartment by Grace. Grace, is dad okay? Where is he? Is he safe? Will Lucian find him? Nina asks anxiously. Don't worry. Lucian won't find him. Grace says perfunctorily. Barry is not her father. She doesn't care if he's safe or not. Let him lie in the hospital. When Lucian finds out that Nina has escaped, he will definitely go to the hospital. Grace has a grim smile on the corner of her mouth. But Nina doesn't see it at all. Nina, turn off your cell phone. Grace frowns suddenly, warning. If she has her cell phone on, Lucian might find her by GPS. If Lucian finds her, it's all over. Nina turns off her cell phone. Although the apartment is remote, Lucian has many ways. Who can guarantee that he can't find it? Sanina so spends most of her time in the house and doesn't go out. Nina is going to have a pregnancy checkup today. She has to go out anyway. Nina puts on an ugly blonde wig and puts on heavy makeup. She sees an ugly hairdresser in the mirror. Even if Grace stands in front of her, she might not recognize her. The hospital is not far from home. The sun is good outside. Nina is walking slowly, enjoying the rare leisure of going out. There is a big electronic display on the opposite building. It's broadcasting local news. The president of Gray family recently announced that he will quit the real estate industry in this city. It is said that there are major problems within Gray family. The share price of Gray family has fallen for three weeks in a row and is at its lowest today. According to sources, the president of Gray family appears to have been hit by a family dispute. He hasn't been to the company for a long time. Now the company's business is supported by a group of old employees who are loyal to Gray family. It's rumored that Lucian, the president Gray family, seems to want to quit the family business. Nina looks up at the electronic display. On the screen is Lucian at a conference. He is thin. His face is full of sorrow. Although he is still tall, he seems a bit decadent. If Lucian used to be a proud and domineering prince, now he is more indifferent. 
Suddenly, the camera gives Lucian a close-up. Nin sees his sharp eyes. She recoils instinctively with fright. The man is scary even on the screen. The baby in her stomach also seems to feel her uneasiness and begins to kick her stomach. Nina claps her stomach. Baby, don't be afraid. I'm here. Nina hasn't had lunch yet. There is a good restaurant nearby. She wants to reward herself and let her baby eat something nutritious. Nina touches her purse. She has enough money. She walks slowly to the restaurant. It's a really classy restaurant. It's full of well-dressed and haughty-looking men and women. The doorman looks at Nina. Her blonde wig and makeup are very cheap. He wants to deny her entry, but he sees that she is pregnant. He helps her open the glass door. The food is delicious and the environment is elegant and quiet. The dining table is separated by big pots of green plants, so the privacy is very good. Nina finishes her meal and sits comfortably for a rest. She hears two girls on her right whispering. Wow. He is really handsome. Yes. He is much more handsome than on TV. He is the real president. Other upstarts can't compare with him. Nina smiles. It seems that there is a handsome guy who attracts the girls. She looks up curiously at the front and is stunned. Isn't that Lucian and Jarvis? Lucian is in a black blazer. He has a high nose and thin lips. There is a certain indifference in his handsome face. He is noble and domineering. Jarvis looks much gentler. There is a slight smile on his handsome face. He is looking into the restaurant. Nina flinches in fear. She lets green plants block her face. What should she do? She is very anxious. She seldom goes out to eat, but she meets Lucian. If he finds her, she will be miserable. But they slowly comes this way. As they get closer, Nina desperately lowers her head. Her heart is about to jump out of her chest. The waiter takes Lucian and Jarvis straight to Nina's left table. Lucian looks around. The table is close to the window. The view is good. But there is a girl with yellow hair and heavy makeup on the right. He's a little unhappy. Jarvis sees Lucian frown and knows what he is thinking. He whispers, don't look at her. This is not your restaurant. You can't drive her out. Lucian says coldly, I won't do that. But this ugly woman makes me sick. Nina takes a water glass and pretends to be drinking. She hides her face behind the glass. Her hand is frozen in the air. An ugly woman with yellow hair and heavy makeup. Is Lucian talking about her? She looks around. Yes. Only she has blonde hair and heavy makeup. She is hated by Lucian.